Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Bergman. Present. Commissioner Marsters. Present. Uh, Commissioner Angela harper Pedersen is out this evening. Uh, Commissioner Gutierrez. Present. Vice Chair Gutierrez, sorry about that. And okay. then Chair Silberman. Present. Um, so uh, the next item on our agenda is public comment. Um, this uh, portion of the agenda is public comment limited to items not on the agenda. So if you would like to uh, speak on an item not on the agenda, this would be the time to do it. Um, seeing that there is no one, I won't read the rest. Um, so next up is approval of the minutes. Um, I would observe uh, that there is a typo um, in a portion that deals with me, so I have to say something about it, uh, which is on page four. Um, the word adding uh, should be add. Uh, does anyone have any other changes, either substantive or non-substantive, to the minutes? No. no. Uh, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes uh, as amended, hopefully. So moved as amended. Uh, is there a second? A second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Okay, so uh, the next item is uh, a public hearing. Uh, the procedure for the public hearing is as follows. Staff will present a report on the history, physical features, et cetera, on the application, followed with the staff's recommendation. Z. The applica applicant will make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor can be held. The commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. If you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in the notice, the public notice, or in written uh, correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Speakers um, are asked to fill out a speaker form found by the door and hand it to the recording secretary, Ms. Porras, at this point I think, uh, prior to addressing the commission. The speaker should come up to the microphone to speak since the meeting is being recorded. This will assist staff in preparing the minutes. And this hearing relates to 1100 Industrial Road, number 11A, APN 112-420-110, consideration of a conditional use permit for office. Um, and I believe there's a presentation. Um, I would observe for the record that we received a letter dated March 2nd, 2015, from Marjorie Fouts uh, from Art Artistic Garage Doors, Inc., um, that uh, everyone on the DACE has and has had an opportunity to review and will be considered part of the record. Um, I don't think this really uh, constitutes a conflict, but I will observe that uh, my door was done by Artistic Garage Doors. But I, I think I can. I think I can maintain my. I, I think I can maintain my impartiality. Although I really do like my door. I wanted to just. Uh, I wanted to uh, disclose that I met with uh, the developer John McMorrow on the Wheeler Plaza. Um, I actually, I mean, I did as well, but I'll disclose that again um, at the time of the meeting when we address that. But oh, that's, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. No, no worries. That's fine. Um, it's n no, there's no one's ever going to get criticized for over-disclosing. I've actually talked to the applicant prior to his submission of his application, too, so I just want to disclose that as well. I see this so application all, or the Wheel of Loss application? No, this application. The one we're talking about right now. All right. <laughs> yes, so you may proceed. Great, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. I'm Andrea Martisic, and I'll be presenting the item this evening. Uh, the item before you is a request for a conditional use permit for professional office, excuse me, professional office physical therapy at 1100 Industrial Road, Unit 11A. The request is being made by Apex Physical Therapy. This suite is part of the large uh, complex known as San Carlos Industrial Park, 
which includes four buildings. Uh, Apex Physical Therapy is proposing to locate within Suite A in the 1100 Industrial Building, which is the building located closest to Britton Avenue. Um, I did want to also note there was a mistake in the staff report. Um, the suite is actually located towards the front of the lot, not, not the rear. Um, so I wanted to point that out. And this slide shows the, the correct location on the, on the aerial. There are 18 units uh, within the 1100 building, totaling approximately 99,000 square feet. Um, the particular suite, Suite 11, is split into two units, totaling 9,395 square feet. Uh, Apex is proposing to occupy 4,440 square feet of this, um, and the remainder of the space has been rented to um, a startup tech company that has about three employees. The current zoning is planned development, um, Ordinance 988, and the general plan designation is planned industrial. The zoning for the site is established through Ordinance 988, which references the PM1 and PM2 zoning districts, uh, which are part of our previous zoning title. Um, and per, these, per this zoning um, district, this use is considered professional office per that title, uh, which is a conditional use requiring planning commission review. Surrounding uses include instructional uses, electronic part sales, printing, biotech, manufacturing, and the Home Depot site is located um, to the west of this building. Apex Physical Therapy has been in business since 2005 and has offices both in San Mateo and San Carlos. Uh, in San Carlos, they're currently located at the 900, excuse me, 985 Industrial Road building um, and are proposing to move to this suite. Apex provides physical therapy to patients throughout the Bay Area and specializes in orthopedic rehabilitation for all ages. They have five employees consisting of two physical therapists, two aides, and a receptionist. Visits are by appointment only from um, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday with no weekend appointments. And each appointment is approximately 60 to 90 minutes, um, depending on the treatment, which can be either exercise or therapy or both. Um, so this is a floor plan of, this, of the, their portion of the suite. Um, as you can see, it would include three offices, a conference room, a lunch room, um, restrooms, and then the central open area for their business. In addition to requiring a conditional use permit, um, Ordinance 988 um, further regulates office uses on site. Section J8 of the ordinance uh, requires that office uses within 1100 industrial shall not exceed 45% of the total square footage of that building. At this time, the only office uses are in Unit 3, which is a professional insurance company, and Unit 18, which is a chiropractic use. If Apex Physical Therapy is approved, the total office square footage for the building would be about 16,000 square feet, um, or 16% of the, the building site, and therefore meet the requirement um, not to exceed 45% office. Uh, Ordinance 988 also established parking regulations for businesses based on use, much as we have for, for other districts. Uh, there were several requirements as part of the ordinance, including a provision that the property owner would have to prepare an ongoing parking analysis for the entire site every time a new zoning clearance came through um, planning. For more effective parking management, the owners prepared a, a revised parking plan, which is included within your packets, um, which was then recorded against the property in 2007. This document was approved by the city and replaced the original parking requirements outlined in the ordinance. Per this agreement, each unit is allocated a specific number of parking spaces regardless of the use. Unit 11 was allocated 24 spaces, which are distributed, excuse me, distributed between units A and B. Um, and then there's also several, several visitor parking spaces on site. Um, as I mentioned before, there's five employees who work out of the office. Um, two days a week, there's only one therapist present. Uh, the number of patients in the clinic will range from four to eight patients. So kind of taking a worst case scenario with maximum number of employees, maximum number of patients, um, 13 parking spaces would be needed and 15 have been allocated for the use. Um, based on the amount of employees, their modified schedule um, and the business model, the parking um, would be sufficient for the proposal. Per our requirements of the San, uh, San Carlos Municipal Code, we did send out a public notice to property owners within a 300 foot radius of the site. And we received one comment today, which um, as you mentioned was left for you um, to read from a neighbor located at 1200 Industrial Road, so a separate building um, who had parking concerns. So I prepared a map um, just showing the two circled areas. Um, the letter we was received was from Artistic Garage Doors, as you can see towards the bottom of the screen. They're located in the building closest to Howard. 
Um, and then I circled the proposed location of um, Apex. Um, they're located approximately 190 yards from each other and two buildings over. Um, per, per artistic garage doors, um, it sounds like they're having um, parking issues specifically with the neighboring um, plumbing business. Um, staff did speak with them and is, is going to provide them that 2007 parking plan um, as well as refer them to the HOA for parking enforcement um, and, and see if there's anything else we can do to help them out. Um, but with regards to this specific office use, um, we don't think that 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 comment will have too much of an effect on the parking um, for Apex. Um, and there's also the condition within the use permit that should um, parking concerns arise or um, they're exceeding you know, what we've, or what's been allocated to them, we can always require them to come back to the Planning Commission for, for re-review if there's, if there's significant concerns. Um, aside from the, the letter today, we have not received any comments or inquiries about the project. So this is a list of the findings that would need to be made to approve the project. Um, staff believes that the proposed use does meet all of the findings. The Ordinance 988 allows for a variety of commercial and industrial uses within the site, um, including professional office. The project is consistent with the planned industrial land use designation, which also um, permits a variety of light industrial and flex uses, including office. Um, the physical therapy services will be available to employees within the industrial area and also serve as a complementary use. Uh, the use will also be utilizing previous office area and will not be converting industrial space to office space. Um, as I mentioned before, should negative effects resulting from parking or circulation occur, the conditional use permit could be brought back to the Planning Commission for re-review. Uh, there's no outside design changes proposed and the zoning district, um, as I mentioned, allows for a variety of uses. Based on the employees, hours of operation and number of clients, um, staff believes that all are compatible uh, with the existing uses in the area. So staff is recommending uh, approval for this project and should you choose to approve it, this would be the motion that you would make. Uh, I'm available for questions and the business owners are also here as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, so do the business owners want to make a presentation? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, is there anyone here who wants to make public comment? Okay, um, then unless, do any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Over staff. Uh, I, I think we can close the public hearing before okay. uh, we do that. Um, uh, but go ahead, ask your questions for staff, it doesn't really matter. Is that it's um, in front of the Planning Commission because it's own plan development or is it because it's usually conditional, not all conditional uses come to us. So I was wondering what was the criteria that Bumped it up to Planning Commission. The zoning, I guess. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, the, um, the, the, in this particular case, because of the, the ordinance that was established through the creation of this plan development, okay. um, it requires that this particular use or professional offices come before the Planning Commission to, um, for consideration of, of use permit approval. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Scott, did you have a question for staff? I, I do, and it's more of, it's, it's sort of trying to understand um, the the parking a little bit more. So um, there's five spaces for um, the employees and eight spaces for the um, individuals that use the service. Do we ever take into consideration the overlap of those um, uh, individuals that come to use the business, or do we just assume that there is no overlap? So my concern, and I, I, it's not going to prevent me from, from you know, uh, doing what I think is right for this project, but it was just a sort of a more for information. Because if you have eight patients there and eight new patients show up, there isn't enough parking spaces for them. And yeah, uh, but I, I don't. I mean, I, I'm sure staff could answer it, but just based on the fact that they've got four employees, I'm as, I'm just assuming that that's uh, one patient per employee plus one patient waiting would be my guess. Sure. Yes. Right. Ten. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So that, that four to eight does cover the overlap. Okay. That, that was sort of what I was trying to get out of staff was if that's normally taken into consideration when they look at parking, if they, they look at the overlap and if... Great. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions for staff or for the applicant? Okay, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. So um, any discussion among the members of the commission? None. No. Um, the only thing I would ask is, and I'm not asking that this be reported back, um, but on the artistic garage door folks, um, if the plumbing company that's a concern is also subject to a conditional use permit, it sounds like we would be able to bring that back to the Planning Commission if it's really a problem. So maybe um, staff could consider taking a look to see whether that's actually a problem or just two bickering neighbors. Um, and if it is an actual problem, maybe the, the staff can consider bringing that back to the Planning Commission. Uh, so with that, if someone wants to make a motion. I move that the Planning Commission approve the request for a conditional use permit to allow a physical therapy office at 1100 Industrial Road, Suite 11A, APN 112420110, based on the findings and for the reasons incorporated in the staff report and as conditioned in the conditional use permit. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Um, that completes that item. Our, our pleasure. Um, so moving on uh, to the next item on the agenda. And you don't have to stay, so. <laughs> you can. It's going to be fascinating. If you really want to see how the sausage is made here. Right. Um, report on recent city council actions. Um, I have one thing, although I suspect that most of the members on the Planning Commission are aware of this, but I know we haven't, we, the Planning Commission, um, has not had um, a meeting, at least I think believe we canceled two Planning Commission meetings prior to meeting tonight. And one of the items that, or uh, actions that was taken by the City Council was to um, trigger the newly adopted Water Conservation Ordinance, um, which um, will go into effect, I believe, um, in... I believe it's um, in March or, or May. I apologize that I don't remember at this particular time. But they basically gave a window of time where, um, I believe it's in May. I, I'm, I'm remembering um, correctly now. It's in May. And this will allow the city to um, do a lot of outreach to educate the citizens and business operators in our community of uh, the requirements um, to abide by that water conservation ordinance. So the city has declared a drought emergency. And so that will take effect um, in May of this year. Um, there is a new web page that was developed to inform people about this and the requirements, as well as um, to provide a, um, a hotline, a number where people can call in if they're um, is uh, an issue with respect to someone who may not be aware of the, the water conservation ordinance. So that was one thing that the council um, recently um, has done. Uh, and other than that, I don't have anything else to report in terms of council actions. Uh, Planning Commission comments or reports? Anything from you, Shannon? Just what I stated earlier, which was I uh, met with Tom McMorrow, who is the developer for the Wheeler Plaza. Um, anything from you? I did as well. I haven't met with him yet. But he said he would be meeting with you. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I assume there's no, it's not a normal meeting date. Is there any intention to try and schedule a meeting for March the 30th? Uh, for the planning commission? Is it the third, would it be the, the, what is the fourth Monday? I think it's uh, the so, fifth Monday. Is that the 30th? Let me check. Of March? Um, that would be, yeah, the 5th. So there would not be a meeting on that date. And there's no intention to try and schedule a special meeting or anything for that date? Um, not according to the information I have. If you're, okay. I know we're kind of segueing off of Wheeler Plaza, but I don't believe that at this point we're, we're not okay, looking into a special meeting. Okay. And then um, if there is going to be a meeting on April the 6th, I might not be available. So if we know um, whether there's going to be a meeting... 
Um, and it's important if you could let me know sooner rather than later. Because okay. I might be able to make uh, arrangements. Um, any correspondence? The only correspondence that staff has received was the one that was left on the dais tonight from Marjorie Pouts with Artistic Garage Doors. Okay. Um, any planning staff comments, reports, and or updates of current projects? Um, just an, an overall kind of big picture update. I know the commission likes to um, get advance notice of projects that are coming before you. I don't have dates for you for, at this particular time, but over the several, next several months there will be some movement happening um, with two big projects. Um, one that I know you're aware of because the draft environmental impact report was released and that's for the Landmark Hotel. And the other is Wheeler Plaza who will, uh, that will come forward um, for um, entitlements. Um, in addition to those two big projects, we do have several um, smaller infill projects, but similar to the s s couple of downtown infill projects that were um, reviewed and approved by the commission previously. Um, there's a project um, occurring at 977 Laurel. This is right across the street from a project um, that was approved by the commission at 934 Laurel, different zoning district on the, um, I guess, east side of Laurel Street. Um, and then two projects on the same block of Walnut, one at 530 Walnut and one at 545 Walnut. We suspect that all of these, these three will be kind of coming in at the same time and um, we're going to try and stagger them a bit so they're not all coming to you on one agenda. Probably we'll have one of those on um, each agenda but they will be coming I would say within the next um, couple of months, within a month to a month and a half before the commission most likely. Um, and then um, we do have um, an application for a lot split at 266 Industrial. This is uh, about a two acre project. They want to split the site into two so it'll be still relatively large um, um, parcel sizes but that will be coming before the commission. And then uh, the next item, see we, we have, we canceled a couple meetings and now we have a lot to kind of work at but it just ends up being that's the way projects take their courses, kind of everything seems to happen at once. The other item that we need to address is another zoning ordinance amendment. Now this zoning ordinance amendment came forward uh, or was um, brought to the surface of our attention um, uh, because it has to do with a project that we're currently processing where the front or the street frontage setback um, currently is um, regulated uh, from zero to five feet. And we feel that that's a bit too close. There's been a lot of public comment um, regarding that issue. This is for the project at 545 Walnut. So um, staff is going to be bringing back a single um, focus zoning ordinance amendment so we can correct that. Um, we believe that, um, you know, I won't say too much because it's not on the agenda, but we believe that this is um, an, uh, a correction that we would like to propose to the commission. So this will be coming um, to you on March 16th. And that concludes my updates. So that's for a certain zoning area or right. certain? This is mixed use zone okay. district, yeah. Specifically MUD, MUD and then MUDC, downtown core, downtown and downtown core. We'll be sending notices out at the end of this week for that. Great. Okay. I think that, has this always been here? Mm-hmm. I don't, has yeah. it? Can you end, the, what if it, like, if, no, never mind, it's not that funny. Okay, meeting's adjourned. Okay.